down the hill. But we have to know that if we trust him, he'll provide. He'll bring us out of it. your boy out today. We got to see how people look at where you are in life. Now to understand Moab, you must understand the history of its beginning. You wouldn't think that it began as it did. Moab was born after Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot fled Sodom with his family, and in effect, he took sin from the city with him into the wilderness. His wife disobeyed God's instructions and was turned into the pillar of salt. Lot's daughters don't take God's plan in their own hands. And the daughters plotted to get their father drunk so that they might commit incest with him so that he could father their children. Now in their minds, the only way that they could have and keep good seed was through their father. It was not that they were trying to do anything wrong. They were trying to keep and make sure that their children were good children. But God. Now, one daughter gave birth to Moab. The other to Ammon. And the descendants of Moab and the descendants of Ammon fault against the children of Israel. Now sometimes we can go and put our hands to things and God turns the very thing that we put our hands to against us. Amen. Now you would not think that Lot's children's sons would turn against their father. But yet Moab was enemies against Israel. Also, Ammon was enemies against Israel. But yet God's got a plan to find a way to take us back into situations to show you that it ain't as bad as you think it is. Sometimes we look at situations as Israel did, and they pass a law that nobody that was an Israelite could marry anyone that was a Moab or that was an Ammonite. And because they passed the law, they felt that, well, we can live and we can be pure in ourselves if we keep it that way. But yet God set a famine in the land of Israel. He set the famine in the land of the enemy of his children. So, God's children are supposed to be blessed. But yet they had no food. And Naomi's husband decided that if I'm going to die, I'm going to die trying to get 
take some food. So I'm not going to be afraid to go into the land of my enemies that I might be blessed. So he picked up his wife and his two sons and they went into the land of Moab. Y'all hold on with me now. It's going to be all right. And after they got there, it's funny how God moved things out of the way. And we read in the scripture when they got there and they lived there for a period of time, the father died. Now the father was holding the reins. He had control of his two sons. But just as soon as he died, they took wives of Moab. Now, we know what the law says, and we know what daddy says, but we've been here for 10 long years. And we're going to find wives right here in Moab. So they took a wife of Oprah and and Ruth. But yet, they lived and before they could bear any children, God had his hand even in that. <coughs> Melon and Chilon died. Now, God knows how to take care of you when you're going through your struggles. He knows how to move you to be blessed. And sometimes we have to know that where God is moving us is to a better place, but yet we have got to see it for ourselves. Just because someone says that we can't be here or we can't be there, but if you trust in God, he will bring you out. Now, the only following after her husband and knowing that her husband was going to take care of her, but yet he died. Okay. Now she had two sons to take care of her, but now they are dead. Yeah. And now she knows the only thing that she has left to do is to go back home. And hopefully that they would have pity upon her. But she had it in her heart that I've come this far by faith, but yet God has turned his face against me. And because God has turned his face against me, I'm bitter in my heart. She told her two daughter-in-laws, I want you to go back to your mother's house. And when you go back to your mother's house, I want you to be blessed because you have been good unto me. But yet one decided that, that they would go, that she would go back, but Ruth said, no, I'm going to be right here with you. Amen. Whatever you go through when you go back home, I'm going to go through it with you. All right. Whatever your ups and downs are, I'm going to be right there with you. All right. If you die, I'm going to die right there in the same old land. <laughs> and if you get buried back there in your land, then I am going to get buried there. But your God will be my God. You've got to know that where you are in your life situation, that God is with you. Yes. It might not look good. It might not smell good. It might not be exactly like you want it to be. It might be a situation to where you don't seem to be getting enough help. But if you would just hold on and trust in God, you've got to know he will make a way. So now we see them as they have traveled back and have gone back into the land of Bethlehem, Judah. Now God's plan was not about man. God's plan was greater than man's mind could ever conceive. Man did not think that, 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 that this would happen to them. And when Naomi returned back, she called herself Mora which means bitterness. Uh, yeah. She changed her name from the only to bitterness because she had bitterness in her heart. Sometimes we don't get it like we want it. Sometimes it don't work like we want it to work. And then we get bitter in our hearts. We get mad with God and think that God is not doing us right. But if we would just keep on praying, if we would just keep on trusting, if we would just keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand, by and by and after a while, we'll know that God will bring us out. Naomi was made. But yet God 
finally got back, she, she began to try and live her life. And not knowing what she was going to do and not knowing how she was going to survive. She knew that her husband had a couple of uh, brothers over there. One of them was by the name of Boaz. That's B-O-A-Z. Boaz. Not as you hear it, but as it is spelled. And while she got back there, she began to talk with him about her situation. But all the other women in the town, they were all upset because you have brought this Moabite woman back into the land of Israel. Did not the law say that we are not supposed to associate with? Did not the law say that none of our men were supposed to marry any of these women? That's why you don't have two sons today because they broke the law. That's why your life is where it is because they didn't, you didn't follow what God's plan was. But I thank God for Naomi because she held her peace. Even in her bitterness, she didn't get angry with them. She finally realized that if I'm going to make it, I must call on the name of the Lord. So then Naomi began to pray and Ruth began to think about if your God has brought us from a mighty long way, if your God has taken care of us, I'm quite sure he can take care of us now. So Naomi told Ruth, well, we got to eat. So I've got one that you can be able to go out and work at his feet. Now I want you to go into Boaz's field. Yeah. Now you've got to know there's places that you must go so that you can be blessed. Yes. You've got to know that there's fields that you've got to go and put your hand to and, yeah. and walk oh, into yeah. and, and be able to, to, to work in so yeah. that God can bring you out. Oh, yeah. You can't look back and say that God wouldn't have it this way or God wouldn't do it this way. You've got to know that if you want to get over, God's going to be the one that brings yeah. you over. Yeah. So while Naomi led her over there and put her in the field, she told her, now I want you to stand back. I don't want you to get in the way of all the other women. I want you to let them to get all of the good grain that they're going to get. They're going to be bundling it up and tying it up. And I just want you to just wait until they get through bundling it up. And after they have bundled it all up, I want you to go and get the scrap that's left over. Even the scraps can make bread. Yeah. And after you have collected all of the scraps, I want you to bring them back to your house yeah. and we're going to thank God for it. And yeah. once you, we thank God for it, we know that everything's going to be all right. We've got to know that when God's going to bless us, that He doesn't give us the best. Yeah. He gives us the leftover. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? He gives us the leftover. Yeah. Sometimes the leftovers is better than that. Beautiful. 
if you want to, you want the people. Go ahead and say whatever it takes. How much land you need. How much land you need. Whatever it takes for me to have this woman. I'm willing and I'm ready to pay for it. So Boaz paid for Ruth. Now you have to see how God works. After he paid for Ruth. And now you see that he came from Rahab and Solomon. You have to look at what God is doing. God's got a way. How it fits life. Now we say that Moab was a bad place. We say that Rahab was a bad woman. We say that Ruth was a bad woman. But God got a way that you can't go over. God got a way that you can't go under. God got a way that you can't go around it. You must come into the door. So whatever's going on, God's going to open the door for you. Talk about this. We said that Solomon married Rahab and Boaz, the son of Solomon and Rahab. They married, he married Ruth. And from the marriage of Boaz and Ruth came Obed. And out of Obed came Jesse. And out of Jesse came David. Jesus Christ. 
Christ is the Son of God, but yet he's my brother. He's your sister. He's my sister. He's my all in all. If I need him, all I got to do is to call on him. If I want something, I know he'll do it. God will. He's always done it.
like me. Because you sit in same seats. Because you are lifted up. Because your job, your house, your car might be better than mine. But I got a God that takes care of me. So I know for myself that when the time comes, when all of us children get together, oh, what a time!
come here to talk to you about being sick. But I was told to come over here and tell you something. She looked at me like I was crazy. I said, God said he has given you something to do. And he expects me to take charge of you. And to move out into what he told me to do. Not look at their faces. Not be concerned about what they think. Worry about how they feel about it. But to do his work for the work of the church. And that's what I told her the other day. So I said, yeah. You have to verify what he wants you to do. He wants you to be the bearer of love. And to open eyes to see love. God always took at the one that you least expect. And it brings more victory because it takes it harder for you to follow one you don't want to follow. That's how God works. So I love it because he said that I ain't going to crowd up and crowd my face at you.
our mind that group. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes. So don't you love the Lord? Yes, Jesus. And you love yourself. Yes, Jesus. Did anything good come out of Moab? Yes. Yes. Walk in the light. Yes. And be blessed. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest in peace with you now and forever. Everybody say, Hallelujah.